Hello again everyone, this is another Meat Maker tutorial video and today we're going to be looking at Revolut joint types. So we're going to go ahead and load up a demo level that we've put together. You want to go to Project and then I'm going to open my Revolut joint demo level. So the first thing you'll notice is that we've got three things set up down here. On the far left we've got a buzzsaw and that'll just be spinning on a fixed point. In the center, we've got a buzzsaw that will be orbiting a fixed point. And on the right hand side, we've got an axe, which is gonna perform two motions and chop. Up the top, we've got a couple of boxes up here as well. Um, these will just be for demonstrating a couple of the properties that get applied when you attach things to a Revolut joint, but you'll probably not need to set anything like this up. So we'll just briefly cover that later on. We'll show you what's going on in the map just by going into test mode. So we'll click that. Wait for the game to enter a play state in the window. And then you'll see all these things I explained. So on the far left, that buzzsaw is just spinning on a single point. In the center, it's rotating around that point in the middle. And on the far right, we've got this chopping blade, which will draw itself back and then chop back down onto a bit of landscape that we put there. And to show you how we set these up, we're going to go into edit mode. And once you're in edit mode, you're going to want to uh, have a look in the objects tab and expand a couple of these sections. So we've got physics objects, anchors, and revolute joints. They're all the things we're going to need to set this up. So we'll show you how we did the one on the far left to start. And for that, we're going to need a physics object. And in this instance, we have buzzsaw one, which if you select, you'll see is highlighted in the game window. We're going to need anchor one, and anchors are just reference points, static reference points to use with joints. And then we'll need the revolute joint. So we've got revolute joint one here. And we'll show you how this is set up. So the revolute joint and the anchor are both occupying the same position on X and Y, 23, 10 on the negative. So that's in revolute joint one, and in anchor one, and it's also the center point for our buzzsaw. So everything that's rotating is rotating around that revolute point. So the position of that revolute joint is the origin of the rotation, which is in the center of the object, and that's why it spins on a fixed point. So the important things you're gonna to need to know for revolute joints are the position coordinates, the body A name ID, the body B name ID, and the initial motor state. So in here you'll see body A name, and body B name. These are the two things that are going to rotate. So for body A, we've set up buzzsaw one. And if we select that again from the objects up here, you'll see it highlights and that's the correct one. And then we've also got for body B anchor one, which is centered. And you can see it here. There's an icon of an anchor in the center of the buzzsaw. Now back in Revolute joint one, you'll see we've set up an initial motor state called spin center. So what we've had to do is, if we expand revolute joint, you'll see you've got motor states there. If you click on that on the right hand side, you'll see that there's a button to add motor states. So we've gone ahead and we've clicked that. And then back over here on the left, there's another expansion for motor states. We'll click that and then you'll see the newly created motor state. So this is the one we've already made and it's called spin center which we named by just double clicking here in the name field. And the important things are to set up your speed, which is how quickly the motion will be carried out and the force with which the motion is applied. So we set this high, the values for speed, they can be relatively low. You're usually looking at somewhere between 150 for your speed to be reasonable. Your max force anywhere between 100,000 and 999,000. Now this is because you've got different scales of objects, different densities, and it entirely depends on what the purpose is within the level. We're just going to set this really high so it's an unimpeded movement, and that'll set that up entirely. So we've got buzzsaw one, with anchor one, revolving around this point inside of the revolute joint, with a speed of five 
and a max force of 500,000. And we'll go back into the test mode and have a look at that. Just to check the results again. So that's it. So in the center there, you can see we've got the two tabs. We've got anchor and revolute, which is this tiny arrow that's curved here. And you can kind of see how that's put together now. So the revolute joints in the middle and the anchors in the center as well of the object and everything's rotating around that one origin point. And we won't bother to go into too much detail about the second buzzsaw in the center over here. That's the same kind of idea, except that we have offset the anchor and the revolute point to the right of the starting position of the second buzzsaw. So that'll just orbit around that but you can still see the icons there and that's the center. That's the origin point of this motion. Now, the uh, axe on the far right, that's gonna need a little bit more explanation. So we're gonna jump back in to the edit mode and we'll break that one down for you to explain motor states, which are very important. These will be important for every joint type. Anything that has a, a motion of any type will need motor. So we've got revolute joint two for that center. Revolute joint three should be the one we've got set up for this axe. So we'll expand that out and you'll see we've got the motor states again. We'll expand those and we actually have two motor states. So the initial motor state, if you click on Revolute joint three, is pull back and we can click down here and have a look at this. So we've called it pull back and we've got a speed of two, so it's slowly pulling the blade back. It's turning clockwise with a force of 100,000. And we haven't got a period in there, but we've got a duration. So it will be pulling back for 2.2 seconds. After which point, once that duration has ended, it will go to its next state, which we've defined as swing. So what we did there is we clicked on mode states, added a new motor state, and we called it swing. And we set up a negative speed and a negative speed will just move in a relative speed, but the opposite direction. So you'll start moving counterclockwise on the revolute joint. And we've applied a high force to that as well on a duration of five seconds, just to give it a nice delay. So what will happen is you'll get these objects revolving around our revolute joint over on the far right, which is also anchored. And then we'll have the first motor state, the initial motor state, which is pull back and you'll see the blade draw back and then after 2.2 seconds you'll see the force applied that rotates it counterclockwise bringing it down and that'll last five seconds so we're going to test mode and we'll have a look at that just one more time there we go so let it touch down and then after a few seconds one two and it's up and then down and that entire motion from when it starts moving down and all the time that it stays there static, that's five seconds. And then it will just repeat because we've set a next state up on pullback and swing so they're in an infinite loop. And you can chain these, you can create as many motor states as you like, make really complex motions. I could have this axe coming down every five seconds, then after that every 10 seconds or randomly almost between them. And that's how you set things like that up. But you can see how this would, uh, you could chain a lot of those together to make some really complex levels. Now, this bit of the top of the level with the two dancing boxes, we'll have a quick look at that just to explain a couple of things that happen when you use joints. So these two boxes are physics objects. We called them small box one and small box two. You can see them highlighted there as I click on them. Now, we haven't got an anchor for this revolute joint, but you'll see that they are attached to a revolute joint, and that'll be revolute joint four. So instead of connecting a body A, and then for a body B, adding an anchor, what we've actually done is attach two physics objects as both the body A and body B. So body A is small box one, body B is small box two. So these two boxes will rotate around the point of the revolute joint, they will also spin round one another. So you'll see how this works when we don't have a fixed point by using an anchor. And 
when two objects are connected in this way, they don't sh they don't have collision with one another. They will still interact with other physics objects in the kind of expected behaviour, but they'll pass through one another because the collision is removed if they both share a joint. Uh, despite that, they'll still have collision with the landscape, so you'll see them bounce off of that. So we'll jump into test mode for the last time and have a really quick look at this. And you'll see that these two boxes are happily dancing around and inside and outside of one another. And occasionally they'll catch on the sides and bounce off. So you can see those forces are still being applied, but they're being thrown around randomly almost. Still colliding with the landscape, with the landscape but not colliding with one another. If we were to drop another physics object in there, it still would collide with it. It is just because they share a revolute joint. But you can see, it's a very versatile joint type. That'll do it for revolute joints. We'll be back with another tutorial video, which we will use to explain. Let's see. We're going to look at rope, distance, and weld joints. So we'll be back with those soon. Enjoy the demo. Thank you. Bye.